Your Excellencies, the President of the United States. Let's get this over with. Appreciate it very much. I also want to mention Congressman De- Deborah Ross. Where's Deborah? Did she, I just had my p- picture taken with her. That's probably why she left. <laughs> no, all kidding to stop. Anyway, you, you can, oh, she couldn't be here, actually. That's not true. I got it mixed up. And she has, uh, you know, she fights very hard for the people of this district, and she's up in Washington right now. I promise to be a president for all America, whether you voted for me or not. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Who remembers, uh, you know, uh, during the pandemic when schools were shut down and uh, Master, the Sergeant First Class mentioned it, kids weren't able to attend school, so they go online. How many of you spent time in McDonald parking lots tapping into their Internet so you could do the homework with your kid? Costs are still too high, but inflation continues to fall. And mortgage rates are falling, they're going to fall more. We have to pass universal background checks. It doesn't violate the Second Amendment, for God's sake. I used to teach the Constitution at at the University of Pennsylvania. President Biden calling himself a professor yesterday, again, despite never teaching a single class. He was given the title Benjamin Franklin Presidential Practice Professor at the University of Pennsylvania, an honorary role that paid him nearly a million bucks. And by the way, guess what? I love it. They said, you're spending all that money. Guess what? That's money saved. Billions of dollars the federal government does not have to pay. Billions and billions of dollars. That's a fact. By the way, how much it cost to make that instrument? The guy invented didn't want to patent it because he wanted it available for everybody. How much it cost to make it? Ten dollars. T-E-N. Package it in every way, add the, all the costs you could possibly think, another $2, maybe 3 And the charging 400 bucks for it? Come on, man. No, I'm serious. We'd go to, you know, my mom would drive us to the local school. It wasn't very far, a little Catholic school called Holy Rosary up the Philadelphia Pike. And if it was the first frost, you'd turn on the windshield wipers. It's the God's truth. And there'd be an oil slick in the window. An oil slick. But you all come from places that have those out. Al- those alleys. When I started the job, I kept talking about the need for a deal with the, with the environment. So we don't have a problem. Anybody think climate's not a problem? Raise your hand. <laughs> Come on, man. And I love people who say, the blood of liberty. Or excuse me, the, excuse me. The tree of liberty is water with the blood of patriots. Well, guess what, man? I didn't see a whole lot of patriots that are out there walking around making sure that we have these weapons. Well, and if you really want to worry about the government, you need an F-16. I, I think one of the reasons the Houthi, I can't prove this, one of the reasons the, the, the Hamas did what they did was I was about to work out a deal with Saudi Arabia wanting to normalize relations. I mean, fully normalize relations with Israel and bring along six other Arab nations to change the dynamic in the region. Got a resolution passed, everybody thought it was nuts. Said they were gonna build a railroad from Riyadh all the way to England, going underwater, not with the railroad, but pipeline. We have plans to build a railroad from the Pacific all the way across the Indian Ocean. <laughs> what you talking about, Willie? <laughs> Through, it's gonna go from Riyadh to Saudi Arabia, to Jordan, to Israel, to so on and so forth. Russia City's working together to help small Small business install, install rooftop solar panels, electric buses, city fleets of all electric buses. Planning, I just met with a lovely woman who uh, knows a little about the environment. Going to plant uh, thousands of trees in her city, a million total, a middle total. It's going to change, uh, protect against extreme heat and so much more. We are now, if we don't lose our footing, in the most powerful position we've been since the end of World War II. We had that post-war period where we knew exactly what we were talking about. But now, think about it. If we're able to maintain support for Ukraine so they don't fall, as Henry Kissinger, Henry Kissinger called me, asked me to call him about three weeks before he died. And I was a young senator when he was the Secretary of State, so we had our run-ins and our agreements and disagreements. 
And he said one part of the conversation was when I called. He said, you know, not since Napoleon, not since Napoleon in France, has Europe looked at Russia without fear. Secretary Buttigieg. Pete turned 30 today. <laughs> and by the way, even though it's historic investments we've made over the last three years, we still reduce the deficit during this whole period. All those investments, we still reduce the deficit by $1 trillion. Last I looked, $1.62 trillion deficit for the first 10 months of this fiscal year. Unbelievable. And interest on the debt this fiscal year, 10 months in, is already up 15.5%. One five and a half percent. That was a moment. That was a moment we were having. We were having a moment. Americans have filled 16 files, 16 new, 16 million new business applications since I became president. And I was getting in the elevator to, to come up and uh, my introducer, where is she? There she is. I said, every time that I hear hail the chief, I wonder, where the hell is he? <laughs> so I think that, uh, you know, one of the reasons I appointed Vivek Murthy, Admiral Murthy, to become the, the solicitor, to, excuse me, become the guy in charge of the whole mental health piece of this operation. I tell every young man who's telling me, I'm thinking of getting married or somebody, I said, look, I, you have any advice? They said, yeah, pick a family with five sisters or more. And they look at me, what the hell is that all about? I said, it's really simple. That way, one of them always loves you, not the same one. <laughs> you always have somebody on your side. anything. When the president got 50-some thousand votes, the lowest number of votes anybody's won got. You know, uh, this idea that it's been a runaway, I, he can characterize any way he wants. Uh, let's him make that judgment. Are you concerning the Arab-American votes voting for you during this election because of Gaza? Many say they will not vote for you. Well, look, uh, the president wants to put a, the former president wants to put a ban on Arabs coming into the country. We'll make sure he, we understand who cares about the Arab population, number one? Number two, we got a long way to go in terms of settling in the six million dollars. How was your meeting yesterday? I thought the meeting went well yesterday. I thought the meeting went well. Where are you sticking to the border agreement? Where are the disagreements to work? I don't think we have any sticking points, though. What, what, what do you make of these attacks between Iran and Pakistan? As you can see, Iran is not particularly well liked in the region. Yeah. And uh, where, where that goes, we're working on now. I don't know where that goes. Are the airstrikes in Yemen working? Well, when you say working, are they stopping the Houthis? No. Are they going to continue? Yes. Do you see House Republicans were trying to impeach New York, sir? I don't know. Do you think it's unconstitutional? Are you on the same page with Prime Minister Netanyahu? Joe, where here she said, Joe, hush up, boy. 